quick revision video on inorganic qualitative analysis. So we'll start with the positive ions, the cations. So I'm looking at ammonium, copper 2, manganese 2, iron 2, iron 3 and chromium 3. And then when we're finished with these we'll look at the negative ions. So ammonium ions first, to your sample of aqueous ammonium ions you'd add a small amount of dilute aqueous sodium hydroxide and warm gently. You test any gas produced with damp red litmus paper and litmus paper should go blue due to the production of the ammonia gas that's produced by the reaction. And the ionic equation for that looks like that. So there's the ammonia gas that's causing the damp red litmus paper to go blue. Copper 2 now. So to your sample of aqueous copper 2 ions, you'd add a small amount of dilute aqueous NaOH. The reaction produces a pale blue precipitate of copper 2 hydroxide and the precipitate is insoluble in excess sodium hydroxide. So the equation looks like that and it actually looks like that, the result. These are photos that I've taken myself. So manganese 2 now, very similar setup. You'd add a small amount of dilute aqueous sodium hydroxide. The reaction gives a light brown or pale pink, you can call it, or even a buff coloured precipitate of manganese 2 hydroxide. The precipitate darkens on standing in air and it's insoluble in excess sodium hydroxide. The equation, very similar to the last one. So that looks like that. So you can see it's sort of light brown in colour and it would darken around here on exposure to air. Iron 2 now, almost identical to the previous ones. We're getting pale green precipitate of iron 2 hydroxide. It turns as a reddy brown on standing in air and it's insoluble. The precipitate's insoluble in excess sodium hydroxide. There's the equation and that's what the photo looks like. So hopefully you can make out that sort of a greeny colour and you can definitely see the, um, the sort of reddy brown colour there uh, from the oxidation of the iron 2 up to iron 3. Iron 3 now, so same procedure. Red brown precipitate of iron 3 hydroxide, which is kind of what you've already seen in the previous photo. It's insoluble in excess sodium hydroxide, so the equation looks like that. And that's the actual photo of the experiment I did. And the final one of these is chromium-3, so the same procedure. Reaction produces a grey-green precipitate of chromium-3 hydroxide. There's the equation for that, and that's what it looks like, and you can see the grey-green precipitate in the test tube. This one actually does dissolve, the precipitate does dissolve in excess sodium hydroxide, and that gives a green solution of this complex ion, CrOH6, 3-, so there's the equation for that, and you'll notice now it's dissolved, the precipitate's dissolved in the photo, and we've got this green solution. So that's actually what it looked like. So moving on to the anions now, the negative ions, we're going to look at carbonate, sulfate, and halide. So we'll look at chloride, bromide, and iodide ions. So carbonate first. So to your sample of aqueous carbonate ions, you'd add a small amount of dilute acid, Nitric acid is the best as it won't contaminate with other ions like sulfate or chloride which could then go and interfere with a further test. So sulfuric acid obviously contains sulfate ions, hydrochloric contains chloride ions. So nitric acid is the best even though it does work with any acid. The reaction should produce effervescence or bubbling due to the production of CO2 and there's the ionic equation for that. So moving on to the sulphate ion, so to your sample of aqueous sulphate ions you'd add a small amount of barium 2 plus ions, aqueous. Barium nitrate's the one I would use because something like barium chloride, which would work, could contaminate with chloride ions. So the reaction should produce a white precipitate due to the production of barium sulphate. That's obviously an insoluble solid. And there's the equation for that one. So the chloride ion now will take each halide ion in turn. So to your sample, you would add a small amount of aqueous silver nitrate, AgNO3, and the reaction should produce a white precipitate from the production of the silver chloride precipitate. There's the equation for that. 
and then you can do a sort of confirmation test of that. Um, the precipitate will fully dissolve on addition of a small amount of dilute aqueous ammonia. So in case that precipitate's not looking sort of perfectly white, you can do that confirmation test with the dilute aqueous ammonia. Bromide iron now, the same procedure as before. This time we should get a cream precipitate from the production of AGBR solid. There's the equation. So the backup test for this one is you would actually add um, a small amount of concentrated aqueous ammonia and the precipitate will dissolve. It actually only partially dissolves if you use the dilute aqueous ammonia. And finally the iodide ion, same procedure as before, yellow precipitate from the production of the insoluble AGI solid, silver iodide. There's the ion equation and the precipitate is insoluble on addition of concentrated aqueous ammonia. It's obviously not going to dissolve either in dilute. So I'm just going to finish with the correct order for the anion tests. So if you're doing these tests on unknown substances, you should carry it out in the order carbonate, then sulfate, then halide, or as I call it, the cash order. And the reason for that is if you carried them out in the wrong order, you'd get a false positive results. I'll give you some examples of that now. So let's suppose you've got um, a carbonate. You don't know it's a carbonate. You think, oh, I'll do the sulfate test first. So if you add barium 2 plus ions to carbonate ions, you'll get a white precipitate of barium carbonate. So obviously you might think that's barium sulfate and think you've got a sulfate. And there's the equation for that one. If you add silver ions to carbonate ions, so again, if you think I'll do the halide test first, well, silver carbonate is a yellowy gray precipitate. So you might be thinking that you've got bromide ions in there or possibly iodide ions in there. There's the equation for that one. And also with silver ions, if you added them to sulfate ions, you get a white precipitate of silver sulfate which you might confuse for silver chloride and think you've actually got a chloride ion present. And there's the equation for that one. So the procedure is carry out the carbonate test first on your unknown. Remember these are unknown substances. And then if, there's a ne if that's negative, you move on to the next test. So that's the sulfate test. If that's negative, you then move on to your halide test to avoid this happening here.